Okay, so good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, a huge thank you to Sally Kay. She's just one of the most lovely humans and her reflexology book club and, and her bringing that to us and to the world is so uh, just lovely. And I'm so grateful that she asked me to bring my latest uh, ebook to you. Uh, this is my first ebook. Uh, to date, I've only done books in print. And actually, I believe it might have been two years ago now, I did um, a talk with the Reflexology Book Club on my book, uh, Something New Every Day, Transformative Daily Self-Care Practices, which offers 30 different self-care techniques, anything from reflexology to energy work, to oil pulling, to dry brushing, this sort of thing. So that was the last time that I presented with the book club. Um, and then I, I certainly also just published a book in December called Intuitive Reiki, an Integrative Approach. Uh, but yeah, so this is my ebook. It, it's, it's uh, I found it was the best way to do this particular book because there are maps that I really want you to be able to zoom into when you're on your computer. I'm gonna show you um, them today so you can get a taste if you don't already have the book. Um, also, you could just reach more people, right? It's like there are certain books, I think all my books are available uh, in the UK and Spain, like they're, they're definitely on Amazon in different countries, but not all books are available. So I'm really grateful for, for, for this kind of format. I think it's the best, way to go. I also did it in book format because some people like to have a printed thing. So you can certainly print it. Um, I forget who was telling me, someone already printed it. Someone sent me an email yesterday and said, I already printed it <laughs> and it's in book format. So it has the right margin. So if you wanted to have it spiral bound, you can. And then in this way, when you're going through the protocols, for instance, admit, uh, when you're going through the protocols, um, it might be just easier for you, depending on you know what you prefer. Uh, and also, I feel like, I don't know, you tell me, but I feel like there hasn't been anything in a while anyway about um, a guide to protocols, reflexology protocols. Uh, and yeah, I just feel like we, we need that. And I feel like this, this book will continue to evolve as it always does, um, because we learn about more uh, diseases and conditions, disorders, certainly autoimmune uh, disorders that are, are, are coming up and arising. So I feel like this will have many additions. Uh, beyond the protocols in the book, I included body systems. So I'm a reflexology educator. And for me, it's really, really important. Like any opportunity I have to educate, uh, I'll take it. And uh, so in the body system portion of the book, there is an image of the body system and it goes into detail. I'm going to show you some of them. I'll probably show you skeletal, muscular. I'll definitely show you neurological, just so you get an idea of that. I kind of feel like I do this for people who are either just learning reflexology or those who maybe are preparing for an exam and they just wanna have like a better idea of like, what, is, what exactly is an integumentary system? Like, what is it? What is it composed of? What does that mean? What are the different aspects? Um, so there is that portion of the book as well. Um, so also this ebook, it's 90 pages. Uh, it is a portion of my reflexology book. <laughs> my, the one that I teach from when I teach reflexology to people who want to become practitioners. So you can imagine if it is 90 pages, the reflexology book <laughs> that I have is like pretty massive. Uh, so, so yeah, but again, I just wanted to make this more available because not everybody's gonna be taking my professional reflexology program and getting that you know uh, lengthy uh, text. All right. So today, and yes, we're to Michelle, we're absolutely going to do protocol information. I'm going to take you through, I'm going to take you through as many as I can. I'm going to take you through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to try to get you through like 10 protocols just to give you a taste of how it is in the book and how I do it. 
Um, it's not just, just going to be the, what the disease or condition is followed by your protocol. It's gonna have other components as well. So I wanna show you that, okay? Um, and what else? So today, I think most of you are reflexologists or studying reflexology, but some of you might be new to it. So I thought I would just kind of give you a taste of what reflexology is, how it works. We know what it is, how it works, but I'm gonna say it just like in a minute time, just to kind of preface it, right? <clears throat> so we know that reflexology works with the neurological system or the nervous system. Sally K, yay, admit. Um, it also works with all our body systems, right? But it is really working with the brain, brain stem, and the spinal cord, right? Our information highway. So my work is extremely detailed. And one of the things I think that I'm known for is my brain work and really addressing very specific brain structures so that we're not just dealing with organs, glands and systems, but we're also dealing with like the hub or one of the hubs, right? Because yes, there's the brain brain, the mind brain, but there's the gut brain, the heart brain, right? We have these, uh, these other kind of um, centers, we'll call them, um, and this information highway is, is our way of, of communicating that to the rest of the body and then outward into the world as we receive and give information, okay? So we know reflexology maps, we have them in our hands, we have them in our feet, our ears, even our face, but I love that we have a plethora of maps. The way that I do my maps and my mapping system is really kind of based on um, the Mandelbrot set, right? This idea of fractalization, for want of a better word, right? We have myriad ways into the body and, and they, can, they can continue to subdivide, if that makes sense, okay? So we know we have iridology or sclerology, two ways of looking at different portions of the eyes to identify what's out of balance in the body. We have the acumeridian map, right? Being able to look at a tooth or teeth and seeing what organ may be out of balance. We have Lynn Booth, right? We have Lynn Booth and um, other practitioners that have identified the dorsum or even the nail housing every part of the body. The colon, the large intestine, also not just the large intestine, but every single part of the body is reflected on that particular organ. And we see this throughout. Also meridian system, of course, acupressure, acupuncture, we're seeing mapping systems this way. So we have myriad ways into the inner body. We love reflexology because we can assess and um, work in the same breath, right? If I was doing iridology, I can assess, but then I'm gonna have to do something about it, right? I'm gonna have to um, maybe prescribe some herbs, which I'm not qualified to do, right? With reflexology, as I'm working with my client, I assess and then I'm able to treat. And then I'm able to actually address, we'll say address, not treat. I'll address what's going on in the inner or outer body right away as I'm assessing, right? So these micro maps, they're all over our body. We are so blessed that there are these myriad ways in, right? Any questions about that so far before I begin to read a little bit from the book and show you some maps. Good, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yay, okay. <laughs> How do I go to speaker view? Yeah, for all of you, um, when you're in Zoom, at, usually at the top right where it says view, when you click on it, you can choose speaker or gallery. Um, it's probably in gallery if you're seeing multiple people. If you're on your phone, it might be a little bit more difficult to get to that speaker mode, okay? Beautiful, okay. All right, so I'm going to read a little bit, very little bit from the book because I'm like a, I'm more tactile. I wanna kind of show you stuff, but I'm gonna read a little bit from the book because why not, right? Dun, dun, dun. And thank you to everybody who, who has bought the book already. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna read you the introduction and a little bit about the foot reflexology map, and then I'm gonna show you. So I have compiled this work 
to help those wishing to deep dive into the myriad of diseases, conditions, syndromes, and disorders that you may experience in your own life or see in your reflexology or wellness practices. In this book, you will learn about many diseases, their definitions, symptoms, types, and the reflexology protocols to best serve you, your family, and your clients. In addition to my private practice, I have had the good fortune to work with people from all over the world, struggling with various diseases and conditions. The clinic I work at often attracts clients who are, are at their wits end with the medical industry and are looking for support from a more holistic perspective. In addition to the common diseases that I see regularly, which include type two diabetes, various cancers and lymphomas, I also provide reflexology to clients with more rare diseases autoimmune disorders, excessive environmental toxins in their bodies, very common, and other conditions that are more difficult to define. It is my hope that this book provides you with greater knowledge and inspiration to help those in need. We will begin with the foot reflexology map, then move into a more detailed brain map, then body systems, and finally protocols for common and not so common diseases and conditions. Regarding the foot reflexology map, I encourage you to utilize my map in conjunction with the reflexology map you are accustomed to using. There are, of course, more reflexology areas reflected on the various views, but I have included the ones I use most often and that you may be less familiar with. For instance, you will note the gallbladder is in a slightly different place than, uh, than the one you may have learned in the Ingham map. I have found in studying the bilary system that this organ is situated closer to the hind foot, more medial, and has branches that extend further. Knowing this will give you a more comprehensive view of the body and how the organs and systems interact. Okay, so I am gonna share uh, my screen. I'm not going to share the book. I'm going to share a PowerPoint of the images that are in the book because they'll be easier to see. Okay. Admit. <clears throat> right. Share screen. All righty. So this is the plantar view of my reflexology map very much inspired by um, the Ingham map, um, but this is a little bit more detailed in some areas. So remember how I was saying the gallbladder, right? I learned the gallbladder was more up through here between the fourth and fifth metatarsals, kind of buried up within that liver. But if you look anatomically at the body, the gallbladder is much lower and it also has these beautiful branches, right? These pancreatic duct, for instance, all these ducts that are kind of connecting different areas of the body and certainly the digestive system. I also included the flexures, right? Splenic flexure. Most of us are familiar with the sigmoid colon or sigmoid flexure. There's also very light through here is your uh, the, the, the skeleton as, as it reflects the spine and the sacrum. So for instance, if we were to just look at that, we would be looking at this, right? So we have the sacrum up through here. And then I identify C1 to 3, 7 up through here because I place the um, occipital ridge right up under this. And that's also where I get my brain structures. Right, C7 coming up through here where you might see the beginning of a bunion, certainly thoracic spine. When I show you the dorsal view of um, my map, uh, where I place the ribs is in relation to where they actually come out from, from the spine. And then we have the lumbar, L1 through L5, and finally the sacrum, okay? So you can see through here, that's where I place the occipital ridge. The reason why I place that there is there's a lot of muscles, right? That attach up through there. The occipital ridge, just working that area in and of itself, even without working all the muscles that are attaching up through here, even without doing that, 
addressing that occipital ridge is really, really pivotal. Also, you could see the thyroid and parathyroids. And again, I'm not gonna do it right now, but when you have the ebook, you can zoom in because it's on your computer instead of a book, right? In the intuitive Reiki book that I did, there's a, um, and that one's in print. That one has a spinal nerve chart in there, also as it rel uh, relates to the chakra system. And I actually made it so that anyone who purchases that book, there's a little link in the book itself that says, hey, go to my website on this hidden page and download that PDF because I need you to zoom into that. I need you to be able to see exactly where the spinal uh, nerve roots are, what they're innervating, et cetera. So again, why an ebook is so much more, I, I just think so much more accessible, right? We have adrenals. We see the difference in shape here. The spleen really nestled up in there. We have the bronchioles bronchi, alveoli. I did put the scapula in here because um, I, 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 you know, I don't know about you guys, I get people with frozen shoulders so much. <laughs> and uh, so, so for um, those of you who know or don't know, you know, the rotator cuff muscles, there's four of them and they're all up in here. On top of the scapula is your supraspinatus. This little line on top of the scapula, your beautiful wing back there, that is called a spine. It's another spine. On top is called the supraspinatus, supraspine, supra superior to the spine of the scapula. On top of the scapula, this is my, fa my favorite area, more so in massage, I would say. When, when, when I, I have um, pain right there, the center of my scapula, that's the infra, right? Inferior to the spine, infraspinatus, right? So someone pressing there, it's a great trigger point is really effective. Now, if someone has a frozen shoulder, massage therapists dig up into, you know, somebody's, uh, what's it called? Um, dig up into, oh, admit, admit. <laughs> um, uh, dig up in there, I'm gonna get rid of that, okay. Uh, to get to that subscapularis. Now, Someone with frozen shoulder, I find this very painful. There's also really delicate and important lymph in that area, right? We know this in, the, in that armpit area. So it's much, you guys know this, it's much safer to address frozen shoulder from a reflexology perspective because I can get to the, um, the subscapularis, sub being underneath the scapula, scapularis. I can actually get my finger up under this fourth metatarsal head and get up under there to address that subscapularis. And there's also the teres minor through here. Okay, so this is why I include, I mean, you can't include everything. There's so much more stuff, <laughs> but we include, you know, but this is what we included, right? All right, so then you also have the dorsal view. And again, the dorsal view has way many more points, way, way, way many more points. But I found it important, especially when somebody is having, like if, if uh, somebody's rib is out of place, for instance, I'm gonna address the dorsum, right? So this is gonna be the area that it will be important for one to address. Lymph is throughout our body, right? We most commonly know it for being in the neck region, um, the breast and under the armpits and the groin, but it's also popliteal right? We have popliteal um, lymph, which is at the level of the knees, and there's quite, it, it's quite concentrated there, okay? So seeing this from the side view, um, one of the most important things I wanted to address were the, the, the legs and the arms, right? And then, of course, the lymph. And then from here, you see a little overview of the spine. Anna Karina Lind from Finland yesterday showed her beautiful map, and she does it arcing up through here as well, similar to me, but her sacrum and coccyx come up through here. My feeling is there, there are differences in the maps and that could be confusing for some people, but it also, again, like the Mandelbrot set, right? Like fra fractalization, there are many different ways in, right? You can place the body in a fetal position, which is what I do in mapping, but there's also ways of placing the body in anatomical position and also getting different maps that way as well, okay? So I'm gonna stop my share 
and see if there are any questions. Just like pause for a second, see if there are any questions of what I said so far before we, we go on. And then we'll go into systems and protocols. So I'm gonna read the chat. I'm gonna read the chat first. And if you have a question, virtually raise your hand or just unmute yourself and ask. Well, the first question, Lori Sloan. Yeah, I'm, work I'm working on this. She says, do you have a foot chart available for purchase and poster size? Yeah, I'm working on that. Um, I oh, Roma, good. Um, yeah, in process. Right now, it's just in the book form in PDF, so you could certainly zoom in. Um, you absolutely can print it yourself and post it in your office, in your reflexology space. I only ask that you don't redistribute it. But absolutely, if you want to put it on your wall in your space, be more, please do. And yeah, I'm working on the foot chart for poster size. Um, all right, any other questions before we move on? Yes, good. I can't see if you, if you start to go like this, I can't see you. Okay. All right, we. Dun, dun. I'm gonna get rid of this. The back view. All right, so we read a little bit. We looked at the maps. I am going to show you more maps, uh, or I'm going to show you a brain map as well before we go into protocols because I want you to give you some idea. Those of you who are not driving, because I know some of you, it's like five o'clock in the UK or it's morning time, and you guys are going places. But those of you who are at home or at your office, I wanna be able to really show you so we could even do it together a little bit for some self-care, right? So as we go over the protocols, why not do them on ourselves, okay? So you, if you are a reflexologist or not, are an absolute expert for your body, right? And reflexologists, we know that our clients are experts in their bodies. They know best, right? They tell us what's up, what's going on. Whether they are empowered or not to know that they have the power within them to know that they are an expert in their body, they absolutely are, right? That's a whole other conversation, right? How do we empower ourselves and each other to know that we have the power within us to know what's going on? And we can do it on a cellular level. We can tap into our inner body um, and, and it's one of the senses, right? It's another sense, much like hearing or seeing. It's, a, it's called interoception, right? It's, a, it's an opportunity and an ability to tap in and to literally feel processes within the body, right? To feel the gastric juices moving, right? To feel peristalsis, to feel heart rate, heartbeat, right? interoception, very interesting concept. And we all have that capacity. It's just a matter of cultivating that ability, okay? Um, so <clears throat> I just gave, as I mentioned earlier, before we started the recording, we just did the International Virtual Reflexology Conference with RAC, uh, Reflexology Association of California. And uh, this was a big part of the talk, right? Um, how do we identify? How do we identify our monologue? what's going on, what's going on with ourselves and what's going on with our clients. And ultimately, when we ask the right questions, we have the ability to get to the underbelly, to get to the root cause, because that comes from understanding the emotion that's under what we're saying. It's under the diagnosis. It's under what someone said was wrong with us, right? Which I don't believe in, right? It's uh, somebody tells you this is going on, that's going on. It isn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily have to be true. But when we get information, especially diagnosis or prognosis, there is a strong emotion under all of this, just like there is a strong emotion underneath everything we feel and think about ourselves and the world around us and each other. So we really get to, we have this opportunity, this beautiful opportunity to continue to get to know ourselves, right? Um, the presentations at the conference were all pe people that you may know and, uh, and love. Certainly I've grown to know and love all of them. Uh, David Waits in the UK, Jane Sheehan in the UK, Spiros in Greece, uh, Anna Karina Lind, uh, uh, she's in Finland. 
We had Sue, Alma Evans, and Annie Trigg, our potty charts, beautiful ladies. They were in the house. Uh, we had Lori Azarella doing reflex oilogy, teaching us about oils. Myself, of course, I, I, I taught a no mind approach to reflexology, emotional patterning and disease, right? Getting to the underbelly via what we feel, what we think, and that affecting ourselves. I miss anybody, Tina? That was it, right? Jane, touch point, and we had touch point from Denmark, right? Peter and Dorta. It's a really, really wonderful weekend. Um, so yeah, we talked about asking the right questions. Um, and you know, I, I was talking about, it's that little sentence in the book where I say I, I'm able to work with people all over the world. The clinic I work at attracts people from all over the world, um, struggling with very interesting uh, conditions and diseases, some very common, like I said, some not so common, some that are unidentifiable. I remember a client once said to me, real smart, she was like, you don't need to know the diagnosis to begin the cure. I don't even get that test. I thought, what a great phrase. You don't need a diagnosis to begin the cure. This is the essence of preventative work, right? Um, but these people that I work with, you know, I, I, I walk into their room, they're, they're under uh, medical care from doctors and naturopaths. Some of them fast on water up to 40 days. It's a very, um, it's, it's an incredible clinic and you really do see miracles happen there. But these people know their blood work inside and out, right? And so many of the conditions and the diseases in the book are, are what I learned from these clients, right? What, what, I, what I learned and what's in the book is coming from them in many, many ways. Um, they've educated me um, on what to do, what not to do, execution, shifting my map, thinking about it differently. Um, you know, it, it's re really incredible. Similarly, uh, there, are, um, there were mornings that I would work, they get their vitals checked every day. And uh, so we were able to uh, give sessions to people where we'd be able to check blood pressure or blood sugar before a session, and then also check after. With the blood sugar, especially if they had the Calibre, we would be able to check blood sugar levels before the session, and then 10, 15 minutes into it, and notice the drop within 10 to 15 minutes, right, of the session, the blood sugar levels dropped. Uh, and, and the same with uh, uh, blood pressure. And certainly a normalization, if someone had lower blood pressure, uh, it would uh, normalize. But we saw more of a decrease because a lot of people that are coming there have higher blood pressure. Um, and yeah, so what else, what else do I wanna say before I share my screen again? Um, you'll notice in the back of the book, there's a reference section of um, some, I, I reference certain websites, uh, you know, like the CDC, the NIH, John Hopkins, etc. cetera. Um, I didn't reference any reflexology books. And the, the reason why is because when I learned reflexology, uh, I, I, I discovered it in 2001 and I, and I began my journey starting in 2002, really began training in 2005 and became national board certified in 2007. So 15 years ago. Um, at that time, those first five years, I was like, with my, I have all my books over there, you know, I'm looking at my Lord Norman, I was looking at my, um, I mean, there's so many books over there, the Kuntz's, you know, and, and the Kuntz's, I remember the book that I learned from had all these protocols in the back. I haven't opened up those books for protocol reference in 10 years. <clears throat> so there's no references back there, but I, I feel like I just want to say aloud that, of course, it enters our body when we learn something, right? Um, even if we don't continue to reference it. So it just becomes like second nature, right? We learned a protocol 15 years ago and we just continue to do it. And then the, the areas that I add that may be different from those are just based on my experience, particularly at the clinic. Um, so we'll get to protocol soon enough. I wanna first go into body systems. I'm just gonna show you because I think this is an opportunity. This is why I wanted to do Zoom. I want you to see stuff. Um, after we do this, I'll hop off and we'll do a little Facebook Live as well if there are more questions. Um, but I wanted to show you stuff and um, I, I'll be sure to, to post this for, for viewing for those who weren't here or if you wanna view this again. So um, part of the reason why, I, I, like I said earlier, I go into detail about the body systems is sometimes, very practical actually, 
sometimes in the protocol se uh, section, usually I will say exactly the areas to work on, but sometimes I'll just say endocrine system, right? <laughs> or, um, you know, reproductive system. So I want you to be able to have a section that you go back to, really look at what all those organs and glands are, review what the most important aspects of, of those um, systems are and be able to then go work more thoroughly, okay? So uh, I think that's all I wanted to say about that. All right, any questions so far before we go into body systems? Oh, what's the name of the clinic? Thank you, Susan. Yeah, the name of the clinic is True North Health. It's located in Santa Rosa, California. We're actually in a number of documentaries um, and we're, 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 we're pretty visible. It's surprising that we're so visible because you know people come on 10 to 20 medications, can't walk, can't see, and after being with us and it's a, it's a very particular type of clinic, right? They're fasting on water or juice and they're moving into a plant-based diet. No oil, no sugar, no salt, right? Now you don't have to do that, but if you have certain diseases or conditions going on, it, I, like I said, I've seen people see and walk again and off all their medications in seven to 10 days. It's really remarkable. So True North Health, uh, the founder, one of the founders is Goldhammer. We're in, uh, one of the documentaries we're in is called What the Health, um, came out a few, some years ago. Um, and then there's another one called Game Changers. Great documentaries if you haven't seen them. Um, but you could actually see some of the, some of our patients, they're my clients, I don't have patients, but they are patients while they're there, they're inpatients. Um, you get to see them talk about their journey. Really, really, really great. Oh yeah, health promoting. Oh, thanks Debbie. Do you know it or did you, are you just really, really good at going online? That's the website. Yeah, healthpromoting.com. Totally health promoting. All right. Any other questions before we do body systems? Yes, absolutely. You had to look it up. Yeah, great. Easy enough to find. There is another true north something in Santa Rosa. So you found the right one. Oh yeah, and you found my my staff. Yeah. And you found my page. <laughs> All right, beautiful, beauteous. All right, let's see. All right, so I want to now share my screen again, and I'm gonna share dun, 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 actually a, a portion of the book. So you'll get to just see. I'm gonna move through it pretty quickly because while I'd love to be with you for three hours, which actually I, I do love to spend, one of my favorite things to do is like be with reflexologists and talk shop. So I'm gonna do my best to like stick to no more than an hour just to respect your time. All right, so this is what you'll see in the book, right? When I go into systems, I'll go into what the system is. I'll do the definition, the function, and in short, for me, the way I learn, I'm definitely, you know, I don't read any books. I mean, everything I read is for fun, I would say for sure, but it's all research all the time. It's all reflexology and Reiki and body work and Qigong and Taoism. It's all the stuff that is interesting to me. But also when it comes to testing or to knowing something uh, very easily or quickly, sometimes I just want to have like the short version. Basically, your skin system if you're, or your integumentary system is skin and exocrine glands. Exo meaning outside, right? Contrary to endo. I also like to break things down really simply. <laughs> so I created an acronym. The functions of the skin are PER. PER, protection, excretion, regulation, okay? I then go into a little bit more detail if you're like me and want to know just little extra stuff about it, right? There are also nerve endings in the skin that provide feedback to the brain. While the integumentary system comprises of hair and nails, it is mostly composed of skin. And there are layers of skin, epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis, right? The subcutaneous tissue. This is what we're mostly dealing with in reflexology, right? We're getting to that um, deeper level. On, on some points, I'll say. There are some points that are, I have found that are a little bit closer to the surface and some that reside a little deeper. And that's just because of the aponeurosis, that thick sheath of plantar fascia that is hard to get through, okay? And then two glands, I just talk about the glands, right? There's one that lubricates the skin and there's, and secretes oil. Uh, another one is the sweat glands, okay? 
And then I show you a picture. This is a picture <laughs> of the integumentary system. Okay. And then I always have a little note section just in case as you're going through, if, if you get really inspired and you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. And I'm gonna go look up, and oh, in my other book, it says something else. I wanna just write it here so I remember. So when I'm referencing my book, I have that. Next, we have the skeletal system. Again, same thing, definition, function, in short, right? Skeletal system, bones, ligaments, easy breezy. Okay. And then rudimentary structures of bone, right? The outer covering, the outer layer, the marrow, the bone, very, very important when we think of our immune system, right? This is one of the areas um, that we can intentionally work in reflexology if somebody is, has a compromised immune system, in addition to the spleen, for instance, right? We know the spleen is housing beautiful white blood cells, getting rid of those damaged red blood cells. The marrow is very important when it comes to immune health. So I encourage you when doing, a, when doing sessions is to be able to go in and as you're doing the session, think I'm working with the skeletal system. I'm working with the marrow within the bone. Right, I remember one of my first teachers, one of my first teachers back in 2005, Wendy Code, uh, I took her class in New York at the Open Center. Um, I, I remember, what did she say? Um, oh, she, when she was talking about pressure, light, medium, deep, she goes, for deep, it's more about intention. You're sinking into the tissue and you're envisioning it going deep. So you can envision working with the marrow, right? Intention is very, very strong. That was, again, a, a big, part of the talk is like what we believe, what we think becomes our reality, right? And then I get into the types of bones, long, short, flat, irregular, sesamoid, right? Our biggest sesamoid we know is found in the knee, the patella, but we have sesamoids other places too. I go into processes and then I show you the skeleton, right? The skeletal system. A little notes. I go into muscular again. This is what you're gonna see for all systems. I'll only do one more after this and then we'll move into protocols since that's really the, the, uh, the bulk of the book, right? Origin, insertion, voluntary muscles versus involuntary versus cardiac. And then of course the different types of muscular movements. We all know these, right? We learned these very early on in our training. But again, I just, I feel like, you know we can never have enough <laughs> and it's good to have a resource you know, if you're not saying this stuff all the time, you might forget it, right? But to be able to have that reference guide, um, it's there for you. And then again, an image, and then neurological system. Neurological system, I obviously go much more in detail. Uh, as you can see, I even get into, of course, the central nervous system and the spinal cord, the peripheral or the PNS, and the 12 cranial nerves. Uh, I mean, we could write a whole book on that, right? But we just list them here. And then of course there's the nervous system and notes for you, okay? So that is a little look at what the, um, the body systems portion of the book is like, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share because I always like to check in intermittently. Is there any questions? Let me just look real quick. Okay, from what we've seen so far, this would be an excellent study guide for those studying for the ARCB exam. Wish I had seen this earlier. <laughs> you tested in November. Yeah, so listen, I'm the same. I'm like, and I remember studying for the ARCB exam and boy, I, I mean, we were just nuts. We were up all night, we had our cards and everything was in different books. We had a rewrite. For me, I always just, you know, I, I, I always wanna simplify. A big part of my practice is, is self-care. If you've been to my website, that is what I do. I, that's, that's, that's what I offer because I feel like even though I teach reflexologists, um, I, I often teach reflexologists how to care for themselves. And in so doing, we can better take care of others. Um, and yeah, it is a study guide. And it's just because I can't help myself. I feel like we have to make things simpler. We need things in one place. Um, it, just, it just helps tremendously. So yeah, and you have the book now, Lori. Uh, this will be an amazing resource for my reflexology students. I'm eager to study this book. Thank you. ARCB was stressful. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you can direct your students. I'll, I'll give you the link. 
Um, and certainly if, if you prefer to, to buy, anyway, we could talk, but yeah, you could direct them. I'll show you that later. Yeah, study guide. We need these study guides. We need things that are simple and we need not a thousand things around us. For me anyway. <laughs> I don't know about you, I'm an Aquarius and I'm like, squirrel, <laughs> I get so distracted, right? So having something that just, I could just look at one thing is delicious. All right, so I feel like we wanna move into protocols, right? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, yeah, let's dive into protocols. All right, so I'm going to pull up the book again. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen again with you because I think this is the best way for you to, um, I might as well, right? We're doing Zoom for a reason. So I might as well just share my darn screen. All right, so these are all our systems. Do, do, do. I'm gonna make it a little bit, I make it a little bit smaller now. All right, so. Once you've moved through all your systems, you get to protocols of diseases and conditions. Let us start at the very beginning with A. <laughs> Let us begin with A. Um, near and dear to my heart because I had no idea, even though I had the froggiest voice as a little girl, uh, I've had acid reflux all my life. I was actually um, quote unquote diagnosed <laughs> by uh, Dr. Manzanares. I remember I was taking his class in Chicago years ago um, and I've taken this class a number of times and you know, he goes around and touches everybody's feet and he goes, you have acid reflux and this is going on with your heart. And I was like, I don't have acid reflux now, totally fine. And at this point um, he was really, really digging in there. And I actually had to miss the rest of the class the final day because I was so sick. I had a huge healing crisis because he was really digging into those throat structures. Because for me, acid, re you know, acid reflux, we know it could be for a variety of reason, reasons, but it is often because um, there, there's too much of that hydrochloric acid and gastric juices kind of going on in the gut. And it just has nowhere to go except for up. So it goes up, that sphincter between your stomach and your esophagus is like open, open. And then all that acid pours upward in the wrong direction. Shouldn't be going that way, right? It can burn your chest area, right? The esophagus, you get heartburn. It could go up further still and make it so you clear your throat a lot. Um, you feel a burning sensation in your throat. It could go up so high, which is how it's happened to me in the past, is it burns my throat and then it went up into my sinus structures and gave me tinnitus or tinnitus. It gave me a ringing in the ears. That's how high the acid came. So often people have a chronic cough or a clearing of the throat and they're diagnosed with something else. I feel acid reflux is something that, especially because of our gut health or our gut non-health, <laughs> we, uh, this is very common, more common than, than we realize, okay? So just showing you exactly, this is how the protocol session, uh, section looks, okay? You got a definition, you got general symptoms, your reflexology areas, okay? When I say throat structures, I am referring to the larynx and trachea and all those throat structures and then down into the esophagus and the stomach. Now, when I, when I teach Taoist exercises, I, I I teach them regularly. I have a self, uh, self care with Chantel. It's a group page on Facebook. And um, I do these little mini classes, um, kind of like half hour classes intermittently, maybe like twice a month. And, and I'll do Taoist exercises often in them. From a Taoist exercise perspective, you are often stroking an exterior structure with acid reflux, you would actually bring your, the palm of your hand down your throat to, the, to, to that sternum esophagus area and then towards that left-hand side to get into the stomach. So you are literally coaxing that, that acid back down where it's supposed to be. So from a reflexology perspective, I do the same thing, right? I am coming down through the throat structures. I am coming down through the esophagus proper and the one that's located with you have the two feet together, right? Remember, I see 
maps like fractals, like the Mandelbrot set, which means it could come through here or it could come through here. And we see different maps that do both of those. In a map, it could be the whole body that's reflected in both, making it so the esophagus absolutely is central to the body. Or if we're looking at a more one foot system, it could be through here or through here, okay? Um, then you have your types and some causes, right? Stress is a big one. I can't drink red wine anymore because that'll do it to me, right? Then you go through and it's just A through Z. <laughs> so let's, let's go to H. And you can see, I mean, there's just lots of different, certainly more general things like anxiety, but also uh, other ones that, that may be uh, less familiar. So let's go to headaches. Do, do, do. Fibromyalgia, yes. Frozen shoulder, we talked about that. Dun, dun, dun. Headaches. All right, so headaches. You, oftentimes the definition is pretty general. We already know what a headache is, but I include there anyway, because again, I just, that's my, my Virgo rising. I wanna be thorough, <laughs> right? Your general symptoms, basic reflexology. You're gonna do this. For a headache, brain, cervical, spine, solar plexus, very basic. But you always wanna look at the type of uh, headaches somebody has. If somebody has a cluster headache, you're gonna to wanna to add hypothalamus and pineal gland. For headaches resulting from poor water absorption, you add the kidney reflexology areas. And I would actually say the urinary system in general, right? Ureters too, and bladder. For sinus, add sinus ileocecal. For headaches that occur due to food intolerance, stomach, liver, small and large intestines, okay? And those are your types. Now we'll go to M. I just wanna kind of give you an overview so you can see. Um, lupus, I see lupus a lot at the clinic. A lot, a lot, a lot. Um, meningitis, right? So there are inflammation of the, uh, okay, so headache, fever, neck pain, stiffness, brain, spine, spinal cord, ileocecal valve, because it's gonna be affecting that kind of uh, uh, fe uh, feeling, right, up there. Meninges or layers of membrane. Right, and then it goes, oh, this is why I wanted to show you this, is because we get to get, admit, we get to get into um, the other layers, right? The three layers of meninges are dura matter, arachnoid, right? Arach, <laughs> we need spider's web. And then of course the pia matter, okay? And we'll go into migraines, right? Again, definition, symptoms, reflexology. These are maybe more common for you. Maybe you already know what these are. So there are other ones that, that, that may, you may need a definition more, right? <laughs> and then I go into the different types, right? Common migraines without an aura. There are people when they come into your office or come to see you as a practitioner, they might not even know the type of migraine they have, but they might be able to say, well, I see auras, right? Or they may have been diagnosed. Okay, not all migraines are accompanied by pain or a headache and certainly not all have um, this aura sensation or those flashing lights, right? So we'll go to pneumonia because a lot of, uh, I, I had um, COVID and had pneumonia after and it's certainly, I'm seeing a lot of people with uh, recurring pneumonia right now, not just because of, because of COVID, but just in general, it's one of those things. I remember someone told me, if once you have it once, it's so easy to get again. And of course, because I believe what I believe will happen. When they told me that, I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna get it again. And I'm not, <laughs> but here are your different types, right? Uh, I'm showing you this because you may wanna be a little bit more detailed. Here I say brain stem. Um, there are areas where I will instead literally say, pons, the medulla, right? Um, I do that because, you know, I want, I think part of learning, for me anyway, part of learning is I see something once. So early on, I forget where, there's the brainstem and I literally, um, you know, will say the, the four areas, the four areas of the thalamus, the, um, the midbrain, the pons and the medulla. 
and then I won't say it again. So when you get to another area where you see brainstem, you can test your knowledge <laughs> and see if you remember. And if you don't, you get to look back. So again, it's just part of, for me, that's a good learning process for me is, is if I get to revisit. Okay, and then let's move on to R. Yeah, it's rheumatism or rheumatic disease, a plethora. Now, all of these, the, the, what I did is, it's not very common as someone comes in and says, I have rheumatism. They'll usually come in and say, I have Crohn's, I have gout, I have psoriatic arthritis. These are the things your clients are gonna tell you. But you'll know now that all of these are rheumatic diseases, which means generally, this is what you work. These are the five areas you always work. When they tell you I have bursitis or gout, go to G for gout and look at what's there. When they say osteoporosis, go to osteoporosis. All of these are, are in the A to Z, okay? And then we'll do two more. Dun, dun, dun. Skin, all right, a very general one. <laughs> um, I often included things that were general like this and then also included the more specific thing. But sometimes when needing to look up something very fast, you might just be like, well, that's a skin condition. So you'll go to skin <laughs> and then you know what to work. But you could also just know that all of these things are ever related to skin conditions, right? If they have ringworm, I had a, a client uh, probably like five months ago who had a ringworm and I know what it looks like. They didn't know what it was. Um, I certainly wasn't able to, okay, I wore, I wore gloves or I worked, I, I wore gloves and I worked around it, right? Um, but there are areas you can use for this. And you also know you could work unilaterally and bilaterally, work on the hands, work on the other foot, right? And then her knowing that she had that, she was able to get herself to a doctor and, and start to take care of it. Shingles, very, very important, um, also very common. And we'll end with ulcers. And then I wanna open for questions, do, do, do. Oh, and see like this, it's like TMJ, refer to jaw. There'll always be something that I refer you back to if it's so ulcers. The only reason I bring this up is because there's different types. I want us to be very knowledgeable. And you know, this is obviously if a client tells you I got blank and you don't know what it is, ask them what it is. I feel like I've had so many clients over the years that have educated me on these new diseases and things that like, you know, it's like you want to know as much as possible, right? So you wanna know the difference between the, the different kind of ulcers, right? Whether they're exterior or interior, right? So again, within the book, you'll see this as well, okay? And then these little notes. Oh, sometimes I do put additional reflexes, right? If um, they have duodenal uh, uh, ulcer, you're gonna add the duodenum. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. All right. I'm kind of throwing a lot at you, but do you, do you get a sense? Are you feeling what it's, what, what it's about? Are you able to see it and feel it? <laughs> yeah? Okay, so I'm gonna look at some questions and then, dun, 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 and then we'll open if there's anyone who wants to ask a question. How do we find your website and book? Oh, I'll, I'll show you that. Oh, and I need to show you the brain map. Um, let me do that right now and then I'm gonna come back for Wendy's comment. How do we find your website and book? All right, let me, so I'm gonna show you, um, I'll show you that, go screen again. All right, so we went through the mapping system. I wanna show you the brain first, okay? This is how I map the brain. So um, you'll notice this is based on, remember how I said the, um, the, the um, occipital ridges through here? So the cerebellum, and that brain stem is gonna be through here, right? The medulla, the pons, pituitary, that's pretty much where we learned it, right? Right smack center where the, um, the center of the swirl is in your fingerprint, that's the same. I want you to be aware of these upper structures, right? This is the, the hypothalamus and the thalamus above, uh, the amygdala. We were talking about it um, in amygdala in my class this weekend, huge center for fear. Right? I brought up the example of the studies that have been done on monkeys that have a damaged or no amygdala. They have no fear. Fear is very important, <laughs> but it also can wreak havoc on all the systems of the body, especially cardiovascular. Touchpoint brought it up as well. They were talking, their, their 
um, presentation was all about the heart. And they brought up the amygdala because that can really kind of raise blood rate, I'm mean, sorry, uh, heart rate, right? Hippocampus, one of my favorite. By the way, we say hippocampus and amygdala, but there's two of them. It's amygdalae and hippocampi, right? The way that I do it, and I'll just show you really quick because I, I have to like show you, um, is how I get to these uh, brain structures. Uh, I'll show you in a moment for that. Okay, so, oh, and this is the last one. So thank you, Sally Kay and Reflexology Book Club. This is my information. Um, and I could put it in the, the chat as well. But as, yeah, my website is The At Home Experience. I started um, that my company many moons ago because I believe we can do everything at home. We can take, it, it begins at home, right? Just like we, we take care of ourselves. Once we've taken care of ourselves, then we can take care of someone else. Like put your mask on first, right? <laughs> it's like before we can help our child, before we can help our sister, before we can help our community, the world, we have to help ourselves. So it's the Adam experience. This is my Facebook group, self-care with Chantel. There's already videos on there. Um, you know, so if you're interested in, one of them was on gratitude and the hypothalamus. So you just go to that group page and you can watch the video. Um, there's another one on just the neck and cervical spine. Uh, uh, sometimes the, the, the group is for people who want to learn about a thing, right? Somebody said plantar fasciitis. So we did a whole half hour on plantar fasciitis. Sometime recently, somebody said, I wanna do this and I didn't feel qualified. So I brought in who I believe is an expert in the field of movement and we did a movement class. So that's a possibility too, but, but most things is, oh goodness, did I just do that? Yeah. Sorry, let's, let's, let's just move that somewhere else. Um, I'm not gonna fix that, but we can maybe just get rid of the ribbon anyway. All right, so then you have, I'm not gonna move my mouse anymore, but I wanted to bring this up to you. Anyone who's ever been a student with me, I have a student discount. So, if you're interested in joining me once a month for my monthly self-care class, just go to that um, hidden page, the at home experience slash student discount. It's mostly reflexologists, but there is, it's, it's different people. Um, and every month we focus on a different thing. And then my books are at the at home experience.com slash books. Um, I will show you, do, do, do. I'll show you, um, one more thing, maybe that'll make it easier too. So I'll do one more share. Um, this is my website, Be At Home Experience. This is the student discount. I'm gonna put this in the chat. Um, I say holistic self-care, certainly most of what I do is reflexology and Reiki, um, but the student discount, if you click on that, it takes you to this page. This is the monthly self-care webinars I do. And we just meet the third Sunday of every month at 11 a.m. And these are our topics. We already had January, mental clarity and productivity. Number two, finding your voice. Um, and then we move through these other um, topics as well. We've been doing it for three years now. We're in our third season. So if you wanna take that class, just go to the hidden link and there's that. And then the books are here. So Intuitive Reiki is through Amazon. This is through me. And then I have these two other books. Sally Kay, the first one that I did with you guys was on this book, Transformative Daily Self-Care Practices. So say for instance, you're like, oh, Intuitive Reiki, way better than protocols. I want Intuitive Reiki. You can just click on it and it takes you to my Amazon page and then you can look inside. So there's that. All right, so I will give you that student discounty thing. So you have it. It's very fun. It's mostly women. We need some men, men in the house. We need men in that group. It's all women. <laughs> um, and then I want to take questions. Okay, so let's see. Do, do, do. And then we're going to end and I'll pop onto Facebook really quick to say hi. Um, the Adam experience. Oh yeah, good. Thank you. Someone posted that. I'm studying my level five. And out of all the books I have, this one has simplified everything for me. Yes, simple. On my front page of my website, I'm like, got five minutes. I'm like, I want self-care. Self-care shouldn't be an hour. It should be like, there are things you could do in 10 seconds. You know what I mean? Um, so we did how to find my website and book. Um, hot flashes in men due to prostate cancer. Yeah, 
yeah, we, we tend to versus menopause women. I didn't get into, um, let, we could look at that. Uh, lymphedema, yes, let's let's show that. Okay, so as I'm looking at this, let me show lymphedema. Go to this website behind there um, and pull up the book. So we're gonna do lymphedema. And by the way, like I said, I feel like this is gonna have more additions just because I'm sure I've missed, there. I've definitely missed things, right? Even though it's 90 pages, it's like, oops. Okay. So this is that. Um, I, I have actually, through the clinic, in my practice in general, but definitely through the clinic, I've, I've had quite a few people with lymphedema. Um, there's one woman who comes to mind who has it pretty severe. And yeah, a gentle touch, we know this, right, is very much required. Um, uh, certainly, if you don't feel qualified or there's anything within you that makes you feel apprehensive, definitely direct them to another practitioner. Uh, lymphatic drainage is a very, my God, or Sally Kay. <laughs> Refer them to Sally Kay or take Sally Kay's class, uh, right? Like, how can we address? So, actually, I would I would say, in addition to this work, um, her work would be, yeah, Sally Kay. Maybe you could even, if you want to talk about what you do in cases of lymphedema. I don't know if you're here still. Do, do, do. I stop my share. Sally Kay. I don't think I can go through you guys to find you easily. But Sally Kay, if you're here and you want to speak to that, I, I would I would suggest lymphatic drainage or the lymph work that she does. Do you have a link to the emotional attachment to these pathologies? Um, I don't. In, in the class that I taught over the weekend, I'll just show you this really quick. Um, that the classes that we taught, the conference that we taught this weekend, it's still available. If you want to see those eight presentations with David Waite and Jane and Speedos and Touchpoint and Anakrina and myself, like all of them, it's still available. It's like, I'll show you, it's through reflexology-ca.org. And you just go to, um, you go there and there's, you could just get the conference. Um, later, we're gonna put the individual ones for sale as well. Um, what I want to show you, I've already forgotten. Oh, the emotional stuff. Yeah, so that's what we were doing this weekend. So let me show you. All right, so um, this was one of the slides I showed over, um, and you're welcome to take a screenshot or whatever. This is very, there are way more than this. This is just something that I brought up as Boy, I mean, we'll take the class if you want to know more about it. When I, when I, I deal a lot with, or, or my passion is really getting to the underbelly of something and getting to the emotional uh, thing that's underneath our monologue, what we say is wrong with us, what we say about ourselves and others all the time. I'll repeat it forever because it's my mantra, no fixing, no judging, no controlling, right? If any of those things move through you, um, we want to continue to to move that out, and we all have an emotional imbalance, right? I I was saying this weekend, it's like one of the um, there's always a dominant negative emotion, and there's always a dominant positive emotion. The trick is to like figure out what those are in you and start to tend to it, right? So for me, my dominant quote unquote negative emotion is fear. That's something that is easy for me. It's something that I've cultivated. <laughs> it's something that I can continually look at and eradicate. I can then know that fear, according to TCM or the traditional Chinese or Korean model, um, is the kidneys, right? So I really need to pay attention to my kidneys. I had kidney stones for the first time about two and a half years ago, right? Um, and again, there are much more than this. Um, I'm saying uh, Triple H, yeah, this is another class, but if you're interested in knowing more about how to get to the emotional imbalances within the body, you just email me. Um, that you could email me through my website, right? 
Where is it? Do, do, do. Yeah, so you can email me through the website. There's a contact page and that goes directly to my personal. So I could easily get you that. Time is flowing. Um, we're gonna stop share so I can look at more questions. Yeah, you practice Sally K all the time. Yeah, amazing. Okay. Of course. Yes, Morgan. Yeah, I want things to be accessible. Yes. These maps, I, I, I tend to, I'm always, um, I, I, I won't publish anything in, until I've really worked with it for a while. So I've been working with that brain map for a few years now. And uh, there's another map I have that goes over uh, both the toes that places the brain, um, the, the uh, midline brain structures in the middle. Um, and that is very effective. But this one I have found to be the most effective, especially with um, issues that relate to emotional imbalances. Okay. Yes, it is recorded. Ah, uh, Jan. Yes, she's part of our monthly self-care group. She says it's awesome. I'm very caring. Aw, you're you're caring and love. It's a wonderful group. It's really it's a uh, we get to do a lot of um, good stuff together. Um, fibromyalgia. You know, it's interesting. Any helpful suggestions for fibromyalgia? Um, you know, I actually took a a, a class with uh, Linda Frank some years ago on fibromyalgia, and and she she's an expert in the field. And one of the things she said that really resonated and I found very important when working with my clients that have fibromyalgia um, is listening, really being present for them. It's more important than the session. It's more important than the reflexology you're giving. How can you really be with this person who needs to be listened to? I would like to also say that a gentle touch might be required but in many cases, in my personal practice with people who have fibromyalgia, they want me to go deep. This is tricky because once you go deep, they usually experience pain after. So I feel the most important thing is the listening because if you get that happening, if you really are present for someone else's healing process, it can really make them feel, I, I said it um, this weekend, right? Enter your back body. And just really just take it in what they're saying and make them feel supported and held. That goes longer, that, that's like the best thing to do. Starting my course with Sally Kay this coming weekend, yay! Done. Advice, experience in working in hospitals, cancer center, yes. So I used to work in hospital, when I lived in New York City, I live in California now, I worked in hospital. I, I didn't work for the hospitals, but I often would come into hospitals and I've worked a lot with people with cancer to this day. Um, it was my experience that I was living in New York City, the hospitals were very open to reflexology and even more open to Reiki. Um, so I did a, a combination. I did sometimes one or the other and sometimes a combination of both. This is very difficult work, Polly. I, I mean, it's like, I've worked with people who have died the next day. You know, it's like, it's a very, um, we're so lucky that we get to be with somebody for their healing process. Like, and, um, and even I'm thinking my aunt, when, when she was also just days, I was with her a week before you know, she died. And just every day I was just rubbing her feet and holding very gentle. You probably know this already with cancer, especially if they're going through any kind of um, chemo or any kind of therapies that are affecting their, their body. You're gonna to wanna to be very careful not to go deep. And I would say, I would encourage you to do more uh, relaxation techniques um, and try to always address, you were in my class, right, Holly? Like address the triple H. Yeah. Your enthusiasm is wonderful. Thank you. And the charts are well done. Thank you. I have the best designer in all the land. He's wonderful. Jean is his name. Um, thank you, thank you for more information. About, yes, thank you, Sally. So important, you know, this is, you know, they say sometimes reflexology, lymph drainage. There is lymph, lymphatic drainage technique and, and what Sally Kay is doing is, is different, right? And, and as reflexologists, I think this is the way to go. Sally Kay in the house, sweet. Um, 
Yeah, and maybe you can get on the book club and talk about lymphedema a little. Like, I think that would be such a great talk. Is there advice, experience in working with hospitals? We did that for myalgia. Yes, da da da. da. Um, two. Okay, thank you for recording this. Um, da da da. Appreciate it. Love you. Okay, so this has been wonderful. We've gone over the hour. It's been about seventy-five minutes. What I'm going to do. Um, oh, Holly, did you have a question? If you do, unmute yourself. Thank you so much. Um, in, in working in the hospitals and the cancer centers, did you have to have um, a special qualification before they let you in? Being I'm not, I'm not um, nationally certified or anything, some hospitals won't unless you have like a nursing yeah. licensure behind you. D didn't know I, they're probably different in every state, but in Ohio, it seems like we can't just walk in and offer our services. Do you, can you offer any information on that? Yeah, do you do Reiki as well or just reflexology? No, just reflexology. I have just my own small business in a marketplace um, where I've been for about seven years. Take my Reiki class. <laughs> because <laughs> Reiki is much easier to get into hospitals because you could do it just hands-on or at a distance. And so there, it, it kind of gets you in the door. Um, right. But yeah, I was in New York at the time and I didn't have a problem. And also when I moved to California, I started teaching... Um, doctors and NPs and uh, nurses, you know, people, I started teaching them reflexology. Luckily, I mean, this is Northern California. They want, the, I think it's Kaiser. One of the hospitals here has introduced, um, uh, what's it called, aromatherapy. Um, mm -hmm. I taught them reflexology. So when a client comes in, when a patient comes into their office, right? Mm -hmm. And they're like, I'm so, so, so stressed out. They give them a little vial of lavender and they go press here and breathe three times. You know, it's like, so I, I've been lucky enough to live in New York and California, which is much more open, but you're right. You might have to have some kind of qualification. Especially after COVID. I mean, because COVID really kind of pulled a lot of restrictions. Uh, you can't touch, can't be in the same room, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Um, hoping that that gets lifted soon so we can have those opportunities. There's so many hurting people that I see in my practice, especially in the medical field. I see a lot of nurses, a lot of healthcare workers, and they're just so maxed out. And I have the honor to work on them and, and help them to relax. It's incredible what people are going through. A lot of hurting people, like you said. Yeah. And also maybe there's a way to be creative, right? Especially in the spring and summer months, maybe there's a way to bring that zero gravity chair to a certain outdoor courtyard okay. and be able yep. to offer to certain patients that have mobility and are able to get to you. That would be a idea. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yep, thanks. Yeah. All right, you guys, um, we're gonna go ahead and end now. I'm gonna pop on to um, Sally Kay's uh, Reflexology Book Club page, um, just to kind of say hi. I do have an appointment really soon, but I just wanna say hi over there to let everybody know that I'll be um, posting the recording. And thank you guys so much. I really appreciate this. I know you're all muted, but I see you all. There's a lot of you and I really appreciate you. Much love. Thank you. Much love. Oh, thank See you, you soon. You. Thank you, Chantel. It's fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Very lovely. Totally enjoyed right, it. Let's get out. We. we. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're the dry. You're driving. I love it. Okay, you guys. Much love. Take care.